pleasure is mine to bring on board uh, Mr. P. N. Vasudevan to, uh, you know, for a conversation around the Q uh, Q4 numbers of uh, Equitas Small Finance Bank. Uh, good morning, Mr. Vasudevan. Welcome to NDTV Profit. Good morning. Uh, so, sir, uh, just want to try and understand with regard to what's happening on the margin front. Um, your yields, when I'm looking at uh, it, not going up significantly. In fact, staying pretty much flat. Cost of funds continues to rise. Uh, margins, would you say, have now bottomed? Yeah. So if you see um, our disbursement yield, uh, it's actually gone up by almost 1% in FY24 compared to FY23. Uh, and if you see the disbursement yield between the third and the fourth quarter, it's remaining steady at about 18.75%. The disbursement yield is steady between the third and the fourth quarter. Now, if you come down to the uh, yield on gross advances, when I say gross advances, I'm kind of taking in the securities book also. When you look at the gross advances book, the yield for the fourth quarter uh, compared to the third quarter has come down by about uh, nearly nine to 10 basis points. And if you look at my interest cost, that's actually gone up by a similar eight to 9% basis points between the third and the fourth quarter. So that's the reason why you see the NIM also dropping uh, between the third and the fourth quarter. Um, the, th the fourth quarter NIM was about 8.16%. That's the exit uh, NIM that we had for the fourth quarter. Um, the other impact uh, on the NIM, of course, we all know is the CD ratio. And uh, you know we had a 100% CD ratio in the beginning of FI24. And by end of FI24, we actually managed to bring it down all the way to about 87%. Uh, so there's a lot of work that we did on the CD ratio, which is basically that we raised extra deposits and put it into investments to help improve the CD ratio. But of course, that has a collateral impact on the NIMS. Um, so going forward, uh, the question you asked in terms of whether the NIM is got bottomed out, uh, I would say that um, you know the CD ratio, we still want to bring it down to about 85% by March 25 which is another 2 percentage that we want to reduce over the next 12 months. So it may not have a dramatic impact on NIM any longer. And in terms of our interest cost, cost of uh, in, uh, cost of funds, uh, we know it's a 7.44 as of March 24. And we expect that most of our old deposits have got uh, matured and repriced at the new rates. Uh, we still have a little bit of old deposits which are left to be uh, maturing and repricing. Uh, so we expect another about 10 basis points increase in our uh, cost of funds uh, over the next one to two quarters. That should uh, play out. Uh, but in terms of the, our uh, yield on advances, uh, because we have been improving our yield on the disbursement, and it, there is a lag time before it gets reflected on the advances, so we expect a little bit of the advance yield to start moving up because of the lag impact of our disbursement on yield, I mean yield on disbursement. Uh, so a combination of all three put together, CD ratio, not much of change required any longer. Interest cost going up marginally by 10 basis over the next two quarters. And um, the fact that our yield on advances will have a lag effect, positive lag effect. I think on a combination basis, we expect that our NIM should remain reasonably steady. We are at 8.16, so I think it will be between 8.1 to 8.15 for the rest of the year. Excellent. That's uh, extremely comprehensive. Thank you so much. Uh, I want to try and understand a sustainability of the deposit growth because um, a 43 percent is extremely strong. Uh, you've obviously showed up on that deposit base in FY24. How does it go in FY25 on a higher base? So uh, last year, you know, we had to raise a higher level of deposit because that's the way we could uh, decrease our uh, CD ratio. But uh, that is not a major, uh, you know, requirement uh, going forward. Uh, we should be looking at about a 25% uh, growth in advances for uh, FI25. And to support a 25% growth, we need a deposit growth of anywhere in the range of 32 to 34%, uh, which will help take care of the SLRs here requirements and keep the CT ratio steady. So somewhere around 32, 33% uh, deposit growth is what we would be looking for in FI25. Sure. Uh, uh, thank you for that. I want to try and understand what is happening on uh, the loan mix front. 25% uh, growth uh, that you are uh, guiding for in FY24, does the mix change in any way and what part of your book is unsecured? If you can just give us that uh, metric. 
So currently, microfinance is our only unsecured book, and that uh, contributes about 18% of the assets uh, advances and uh, balance 82% of secured loans. Uh, we have a board-approved uh, long-term strategy as part of which uh, we have pegged or capped the unsecured portion of the bank's uh, portfolio at about 20%. So we don't expect at any point in time the unsecured book to go beyond 20%. Uh, we are introducing personal loans in this quarter and credit card should come up in the third quarter of this financial year. So when these two come in uh, and they start contributing over a period of time, microfinance portfolio will be adjusted to ensure that all three put together do not exceed 20%. Uh, in terms of uh, portfolio mix, uh, there will be a shift between microfinance uh, personal loan credit card, uh, as, as I said, over the next two to three years. Uh, but minus that, uh, more or less, we are uh, fairly where we want to be in terms of our product mix. So I don't think that uh, there will be too dramatic a shift uh, outside of this uh, over the next uh, two, three years. Sure, sure, sir. So I want to circle back to margins and I'll ask you why. You know, there's, uh, there's likely been a topping of rates. Uh, once the rate cut starts, does the margin change in any way? I just want to throw perspective on that because may not be likely in FY25. People are now putting that at, at FY26 analysts, I believe. Uh, but, but nonetheless, uh, how, what is your fixed rated book versus floating? Uh, just give us perspective on whether margins have an upside potential or not, just from a rate change perspective. Yeah, actually, you know, we are almost 85% uh, fixed rate loan book uh, bank. So that's a very high level of fixed rate uh, loans for, for a bank. And that's largely because we deal with a very low uh, income profile of borrowers and where it's very difficult to explain to them the floating rate uh, concept. So mostly 85% is a uh, fixed rate loan. Because of that, we actually had um, a very strong negative impact on our yield and NIMS over the last 12 months when the interest rates were going up. Uh, this year, assuming that interest rates uh, will remain steady, the market interest rates will remain steady, uh, we should see our name also stabilizing. And at some point in time, at some point in time in the future, if the interest rates in the, uh, in the market actually start dropping, that's a time when we should actually see a positive impact on our name because uh, as I mentioned, you know, 85% being fixed, we'll have the reverse impact of what we had last year. Sure, sure, sir. And uh, okay, so that's with regard to top line. I want to uh, quickly switch over to asset quality. Uh, GNPAs have crept up a wee bit when I'm looking at it sequentially. Uh, what explains that and uh, uh, where should it be at steady state? Of course, benign uh, asset quality environment at the moment. Yeah, see our pre-COVID GNP used to be 2.5 to 2.6% and we are practically back to that level. So I believe that our portfolio has matured uh, since the pandemic and we are now practically at what uh, is a sustainable steady, steady state basis. And uh, if you look at our GNP between the third and the fourth quarter, uh, the third quarter GNP was 2.39% and it was moved to 2.52%. That's almost 13 basis points increase. But we also did a securitization in the fourth quarter. If you kind of adjust for that securitization, then our, um, you know, the, the GNP would come down to 2.39%. So practically where it used to be in the third quarter. So sure. the securitized uh, impact was that 13 basis points in terms of GNP. Understood, understood. Uh, so very quickly with regard to OPEX, o OPEX to assets remains quite elevated, 6%. Do you expect that to continue going forward? That's one. And ROAs have slipped below 2%. Is that at all a concern or is that just possibly a quarterly problem and will repair itself in FY25? Yeah. So um, the... Uh, uh, OPEX the, to assets, uh, sir, uh, and ROA. Yeah. OPEX to assets, see, we will continue to have some level of uh, expenses being incurred by the bank. We are not really looking to uh, cut cost and uh, save on expenses at this point in time because we still have a lot of uh, uh, building of the bank uh, to be done for the next uh, three, four years. Uh, as we have mentioned in our presentation also, investor presentation also, uh, we are looking to invest in uh, people, product and technology uh, in terms of our personal loans, credit cards, AD1 uh, business and the customer loan app that we have just launched in April, right? 
so we are looking to invest about 520 crores over a three year period on these four initiatives which will keep our cost at a at the current level so, so i don't think our cost as a percentage will really go down in in the short term um but in terms of roa uh, you know we are at to, to at, at 1.99% for the full year fy24 and uh, yes i think uh, we should be uh, able to hold our roa very close to the 2% level um because we see that the nim should become steady as i mentioned earlier we should see a steady state name for the rest of the year and that should really help us uh, maintaining the uh, bottom line ratios also understood uh, thank you so much mr vasudevan for all of that perspective roa is mind you slipping below two uh, something to look out for uh, but thank you so much mr vasudevan it's been a pleasure speaking with you thank you